Oke. To today's end of year, a special halaka. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming, for attending in these days. Uh, we are very happy to have a guest speaker, Ustada Noor, who will be speaking later on. Alhamdulillah, our Imam is now licensed marriage officer. Please reach out to the management if you would like to know more about the legal marriage service. Alhamdulillah, Imam Maru udah sekarang pakai license ya? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now uh, we have Aska here already. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Braska is a young student of Imam Mar. He is currently memorizing the Quran and has a love for race car driving. He is the proud owner of Samara Kitchen, which I encourage you all to visit. Once you guys <laughs> got the time, just suggest you guys to visit the Samara. That's all. <laughs> okay. Aska, you can start now with uh, the ayah that you want to read. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا صالحين فخانتاهما فخانتاهما فلم يغني عنهما من الله شيئا وقيل ادخل النار وقيل ادخل النار مع الداخلين وضرب الله مثلا للذين امنوا امرأة فرعون إذ قالت رب بني لي عندك بيتا في الجنة ونجني من فرعون ومنه ونجني من القوم الظالمين ومريم منة عمران التي أحصنت فرجها فنفخنا فيه من روحنا فنفخنا فيه من روحنا وصدقت بكلمات ربها وكتبه وكانت من القانتين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما وداك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنحر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث Masha'Allah, Tabarakallah, Raska, thank you very much. <coughs> and now we are calling uh, for the Quran translation by Nabil. Full name is Muhammad Nabil Arafi, currently studying in the University of Misaga learning digital enterprise management professional writing and communication and linguistics In the name of Allah, the merciful and compassionate. Allah sets forth an example for this the believers, the wife of the Noah and the Prophet Noah and the wife of the Prophet Lut. Each of them was married to one of the righteous servants, yet they all of them are betrayed. 
so their husbands were of no benefit to them against Allah whatsoever. Both were told, enter the fire along with the others. And Allah sets forth an example also for the believers, yet the wife of the Fir'aun, who prayed, O oh my Lord, build me a house in Jannah near you, and save me from the Fir'aun and his evil doing, and save me from the wrongdoing of the people. And lastly, there is also the example of Maryam binti Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we breathe into her womb through our angel Jibril. She testified to the words of her Lord and his scriptures, and was one of the sincerely devout. And this is for the at ones. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. By the morning sunlight and the night when it falls still. Your Lord or Prophet has not abandoned you, nor has he become hateful of you. And the next life is certainly far better for you than this one. And surely your Lord will give you so much to you that will, you will be pleased. Did he not find you as an orphan, then sheltered you? Did he not find you unguided, then guided you in the end? And did he not find you needy, then satisfied your needy? So do not oppress the orphan, nor repulse the beggar, and lastly, proclaim the blessings of your Lord. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry. Thank you very much, Nabil, for the great translation. MashaAllah, it was very great and amazing. Um, and now we have a short speech on the life of the wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Sister Rafida. Her name is Rafida Riano, studying uh, psycholo psychology at the University of Toronto, Misaga. Can we have uh, Rafida here, please? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rafida, and today I will be sharing with you the remarkable life of Um Salama, one of the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um Salama's story is not only inspiring but also offers valuable lessons that we can learn from her experiences. So Um Salama has a real name, Hindi, Hindi, sorry. Hindu, Binti Abi Umayya, and she was born in Mecca into a noble and respectable family. She married Abdullah bin Abdul Asad at a young age, and together they had four children. However, their lives were filled with challenges as they both, as they both embraced Islam. They faced persecution and were forced to endure the hardships inflicted upon the early Muslim community. Tragedy struck when Umm Salama's husband passed away during the Battle of Uhud. This left her as a widow, with four young children to raise on her own. And despite her grief and struggles, Um Salama remained steadfast in her faith and continued to support the Muslim community. So in the year 622 Common Era, Um Salama uh, made the courageous decision to migrate to Medina, along with her young son. This migration is known as the Hijrah and it, made, it, made, it marked a turning point in Islamic history. So Umm Salama's journey was tiring and dangerous, but it demonstrated her unwavering commitment to Islam and her willingness to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Upon arriving in Medina, Umm Salama became an integral part of the Islam community. She actively participated in social and political affairs and provided guidance for both men and women. Her life took a significant turn when she received a marriage proposal from the Prophet Muhammad himself. This proposal was not just about companionship, but also carried a deeper purpose. Umm Salama accepted this proposal, making her one of the mothers of the believers. As the wife of Prophet Muhammad, 
Um Salama played an essential role in supporting his uh, in supporting his prof well prophet life, I guess. <laughs> Uh, one of the most notable incidents involving Um Salama occurred during the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. When Prophet Muhammad negotiated a peace treaty with the Quraysh tribe, some Muslims were dissatisfied with the terms, and Um Salama advised the Prophet to shave his head and perform the sacrificial rites, despite opposition from his companions. And the Prophet followed her advice, which led to a resolution and prevented potential conflict in the future. This incident highlights Um Salama's wisdom, diplomacy, and her ability to provide sound advice in critical situations. She also demonstrated great wisdom and diplomacy during challenging times, particularly after the Prophet's death, when conflicts arose within the Muslim community regarding leadership. Um Salama deployed um, exceptional wisdom and uh, advocates for unity and guides the community towards peaceful resolutions. One of the most significant lessons we can learn from Umm Salama's life is resilience, and also, well, resilience in the face of diversity. She endured immense hardships, but never wavered in her faith or commitment to Islam. Her ability to remain steadfast and patient serves as an inspiration for us all, reminding us of the importance of perseverance in the face of challenges. Furthermore, Umm Salama's role as peacemaker teaches us the value of diplomacy and unity. She consistently sought to bridge divides between the Muslim community and prioritize harmony over discord. Her actions remind us of the significance of resolving conflicts peacefully and fostering a sense of unity among believers. In conclusion, Um Salama's life is an example of strength, resilience, and wisdom. Her unwavering faith and dedication to the Islamic world serve as an inspiration for Muslims all around the world and all around the eras. We can learn valuable lessons from her experience, including the importance of perseverance in difficult times and significance of fostering unity within the community. Thank you again for listening to my speech. Uh, if, there are if there are any mistakes, it came from me solely. And if there are any wisdom you gain, it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you again. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Thank you very much, Rafida, for your great speech. We really appreciate that, that you make it that effort. And now we have our special speaker uh, by Ustada Noor, uh, which is we already have her here. Uh, the topic is about uh, life of Maryam. May peace be upon her. Ustada Noor grew up in Singapore and attained Al Azhar University, Egypt, where she gained her bachelor's degree in Islamic sciences. After that, she completed her master's in Islamic law from the Islamic University in Malaysia. Her thesis was on the topic of Islamic inheriting laws. Ustada Noor is also a mother and currently serves as a teacher at the Canadian Islamic Center teaching the Ashari to known Arabic students who wish to learn the Arabic language as already mentioned by Imam Umar. So if anyone interested to learn Arabic language, those who are not fluently knows Arabic language, they can go to Ustada Noor. And now we invite her to come in front. Yeah.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hallul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Amma ba'd. Um Thank you so much, um, um, the MC, uh, Brother Milad. And I would like to uh, express my gratitude to Imam, um, Imam Omar and also Sister Alisa for inviting me here and also the Masjid Stiklal Committee. For have, thank you for having me here. Yang kami hormati, bapa-bapa, ibu-ibu, um, saya amat gembira dapat jumpa anda semua di sini di Majlis Istiqlal, Masya Allah, um, a very big Indonesian community here, Masya Allah, I'm so happy. Yeah, and I'm from Indonesia, to me, I'm from Singapore, but my yeah, ethnicity is, my ethnicity is uh, Indonesian. Yeah, my uh, father is from East Java, Java Timur. Mungkin anda pernah uh, tahu di Bondowoso. Yeah, dan ibu saya di Java Timur juga, di Bawian dekat dengan bersih di sana. Ya, jadi ketika Datuk dan kakek saya kami di Malaysia disebut kata 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 Datuk. Ya, maksudnya grandparents, ya my grandparents um uh, yeah, they, they are from Indonesia, from East Java. Ya. Ya, so I'm so happy to meet all of you here. Ya, so I can yeah, I can do both like um, in English, in Bahasa and also in Malaysian language alhamdulillah. Ya. Okay, insyaallah I'm so honored to be here um, to share with you. I'm not going to teach you anything. <laughs> yeah, just I'm going to share with you okay, the, mashallah, the a fantastic lady, uh, Maria Malah Salam. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, the first one. Okay, because I only have like 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm presenting Surah Ali Imran. So I'm going to start with the, the meaning of Ali Imran. So Ali means family in Arabic. Yeah, so, so Ali Imran is in the family of Imran. Okay. And he's not um, a prophet or a Nabi. Okay. And uh, he's just a pious person with a pious wife. And inshallah we'll um, share together about, about his story and his family. So the first one, okay, the Ali means family of Imran. So, like, if you have heard okay, about the um, some Arabs, they like, for example, Al Haddad, Al Attas, it starts with Al, right? So, Al means is Ali, it means family. So, if, if a person named, uh, for example, Abbas, Al Attas, for example, yeah, so it means Abbas from the family Al Attas. Yeah, so, Al, for the Arabic family's name, is mean family. Yeah, just in case you are wondering what is al 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 haddad al aqas al saqaf al junaid and yeah and others too. So let's see the first ayah Ali Imran. So the story of the family of Imran starts from the uh, verse thirty three in Surah Al Imran. Okay, so I'm going to read for you, recite for you the the verse thirty three. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين. So it means indeed. So إن in Arabic if you study Arabic language in نحو is mean حرف توكيد ونصب. Yeah, so it's mean indeed. Okay, Allah chose Adam, Noah, the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran above all people of their time. So maybe some of you was wondering, like, why is no one not Nuh? And I asked my professor in in uh, Malaysia, yeah, and I asked her, like, why like Jesus, why not Isa, السلام, why Noah, why Abraham, not Ibrahim, السلام, like what we mentioned in Arabic in the Quran. So she she replied that, yeah, some, uh, I mean, some people, okay, they pronounce the name differently. Yeah, but it's the same person, but that's, the pronunciation is different. For example, when I was in Egypt, for example, the person who named Yusuf, 
they don't call Yusuf. Okay, they call him the Yusuf. Yeah, so it's like different pronunciation. And for example, um, a person named um, Firdaus. Okay, we call Firdaus. Yeah, but in Egypt, they don't call Firdaus. So my professor, he, her name is Firdaus, but in Egypt, the, the Egyptian, they call them Fardus. So it's totally different. Okay, mashallah. So that, just the pronunciation is... Uh, it's not the same, but it's the, it's mean the same person. Okay. So Imran, if you know that okay, Imran okay, is from the family of the prophet, but he's not a prophet, okay, but he came from the family of prophet from uh, Ibrahim A.S. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, they are descendants of one another and always all hearing and all knowing. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ذرية بعضها من بعض الله سميع عليم كده as the descendants of one another and always to all hearing all knowing yeah so descendants mean like they are from the same family okay the from the same family heritage okay from Adam عليه السلام okay and if you yeah from the slide before like why is mentioned no yeah so Adam is the first person okay the first nabi okay but the rasul the messenger is cut from Nuh alayhi salam yeah so the Nuh alayhi salam okay the first uh, messenger okay the first rasul okay and then ibrahim then from ibrahim okay, until ali imran until the family of imran okay let's move on to the the Surah Al-Imran, verse 35. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. So, okay, so we're going to uh, listen to the ayah okay, where Allah Ta'ala mentioned about the, the wife of Imran. Okay, so, it, as we know that Maryam alayhi salam, okay, mashaAllah, okay, she's a very pious lady, okay, al-muttaqiyah, okay, and it's not... Maybe some people think that okay, when the wife, uh, when the wife delivered the baby, that's where okay, the 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 child like we have to nurture the child okay, when it's born. Okay, but when we recite Surah Al Imran, it's actually when the mother when she's pregnant with the, the with the child. Yeah. So maybe like maybe some of us maybe yeah maybe the ladies maybe you are pregnant. Maybe from, from now, maybe you could um, make dua to Allah, okay, may Allah grant you a solid and solid child for you. Okay, because the nurturing starts when the mother is pregnant, not when the baby is delivered. Okay, mashallah. So it's mentioned in Surah Al-Imran. Okay, we will uh, look at the Nazar. Okay, nazar means pledge. Okay? We, will, we will go through about this. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. إذا قالت امرأة وامران ربي إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم okay, So the next slide, okay, this means remember okay, when the wife of Imran said My Lord, I dedicate what is in my womb entirely to your service so accept it from me, you alone are truly all, the, all here and all knowing So when uh, when we read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, maybe some of you heard of tafsir Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah. Yeah, so I refer um, from his book, tafsir Ibn Kathir. So when, because when we, when we say the Quran, it's just like this, okay, but we don't know what's the story behind the wife of Imran. So in the, uh, some people say that his wife's name is Hannah. Yeah. Yeah, some call it Hannah. So, so the wife of Imran, okay, but it doesn't mention Hannah here. So if you recite the Quran, the whole Quran, it's only Maryam is the real name. It's not even us. If you uh, listen to uh, Sheikh Razka, he recite about the us, uh, about the, the wife of uh, Pharaoh or the wife of Fir'aun. Yeah. So it, it doesn't mention the name of the, any lady except Maryam, even not her mother. Or the wife of um, um, Pharaoh, Fir'aun, Asiya, or even not the wife of the Prophet Muhammad. So only Maryam, it, her, 
a name, a real name mentioned in the Quran. So if you recite the Quran, if you observe okay, uh, only the prophets okay, and some pious men like um, Imran, okay, Luqman, for example, and we don't, we don't see any names like the, the bad people like Pharaoh, the, the real name of Pharaoh, okay, the, the real name of, of Abu Lahab. Yeah, some people say the Pharaoh name, the real name, his name is from Sis, from Sis II. Yeah. So in Egypt, they don't call king that time. Yeah. So like uh, they call Pharaoh or Pharaoh. Okay. And like some country, we have president. Okay. Like uh, in Singapore, we have president. Okay. And yeah, with some like uh, in Brunei, they have like kingdom. Okay. The kingdom of Brunei, the kingdom of Thailand. Yeah. So some yeah different countries they have different title of, for the rulers, right? So. Yeah, it's only let's go back to our story. So it's only Maryam Allah mentioned her, her real name. So you could see the MashaAllah how Allah Ta'ala honors a lady. Okay, MashaAllah. Okay, so back to this ayah, okay, verse 35. Okay, and Ma and Hannah, okay, the wife of Imran, yeah, it, it took time for her to get pregnant. Yeah, so he I mean she um she make she make dua to Allah. And finally, and she, and finally, she got pregnant. And when she and when she was pregnant, okay, she made a nazar. Okay, nazar means a pledge. Yeah, maybe some of you understand like a pledge that you need to do something and it's wajib to do. Yeah, otherwise you have to you have to pay the kafara. Yeah. So in the uh, I think it's in the verse um, uh, I think in Surah Al Maidah okay, about the the ayah or the verse about the. Uh, about the kafara. A kafara is an expiation of sins. Okay, when you do this, okay, for example, giving food to at least like uh, 10, 10 poor people, for example, yeah, you could refer to the uh, Surah Al Maida. If I'm not mistaken, maybe verse 56. Yeah. So she made a nazar. Okay, I dedicate what is in my womb entirely to your service. So except from me, you all don't actually all hearing or knowing. So what, okay, what happened next? Okay. So Hannah or the, the wife of Imran, okay, she said that he, if she delivers a baby and she doesn't know the, the gender, whether it's a boy or girl. Yeah. So and during that time, there wasn't any like uh, ultrasound like, like we do. Yeah. But some countries, they, I know that some countries, I, I shouldn't mention which country, but some countries, uh, it's illegal to check the gender of a baby. Yeah. So you, you, you can't check the gender of baby because yeah i don't know okay, it's just the policy of the country because that country like they prefer boys rather than the girls so the government made the policy that okay, it's illegal to check the gender of a baby yeah but i, I couldn't say the which country it is but it's happened yeah it's, not in canada but yeah some other country yeah. so during that time she doesn't know which, uh, the gender of the baby so when then the next ayah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. فلما وضعتها قالت ربي إني وضعتها أنت والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كالأنت وليس الذكر كالأنت وإني سميتها مريم وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيدها بك وَإِنِّي أُعِيدُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So let's look at the translation. So, but when she delivered her, okay, she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female. Okay, because she preferred a male okay, to, to devote okay, the child to the mihrab. Okay, you will see the word mihrab. Okay, during that time, she made uh, the nazar, the pledge that Okay, if she did a baby, she will dedicate the baby to, to the, uh, to the worship place or some people that translate as a temple or like a masjid, yeah, to be the, to devote okay, all his life or her life okay, in the masjid. But when I read the Tafsir ibn Kathir, it said that uh, it's Bayt al-Maqdis, the Masjid al-Aqsa. Okay, mashallah. It's not mentioned in the ayah, but when you read the Tafsir. For example, Ibn Kathir, you will know more about the story. Yeah. So, 
uh, the place the, the in the place for worship is in was in the Masjid al-Aqsa okay, in Palestine okay, may Allah protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine I mean Europe yeah so yeah they were in Palestine yeah so when you recite when we when you can recite the ayah is not mentioned there but when you read the tafsir it tells us more about the story so when Mar when Maryam was born okay she's a girl okay and so they named her Maryam okay in the translation said Mary okay but in the Quran it says Maryam okay but in uh, in Egypt in Egypt, we call Maryam, like Kasra, Maryam. Yeah. So, but when she delivered her, she, and she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female, and Allah was most knowing of what she delivered, but she expected that it will be a male, and the male is not like the female, and she acknowledged that okay, the baby girl is not the same as a boy, and I named her Maryam. So, in Tafsir ibn Kathir, it's mentioned that it is um, permissible okay, to name the child when it was born okay, because when we read the hadith that our prophet muhammad uh, encouraged us to name our baby after seven days okay, after akika yeah but when we read surah al imran it's mentioned that it's permissible to name when the child the day that the child was born okay and i seek ref refuge for her in you and for her descendants from satan the expelled from the mercy of allah yeah so uh, the wife of Maryam, alayhi salam, okay, she made dua that uh, may, may Allah protect her child and not only her child but the descendants. Cucu-cucu, okay, bukan, bukan saja anak tapi juga cucu-cucu. Okay, Masya Allah keturunan semuanya is agar diselamatkan daripada syaitan. So in hadith, dalam hadith juga uh, ada di dikatakan bahawa hanya Maryam sahaja Okay, uh, yang tidak diganggu oleh syaitan. Maryam dan juga Isa Isa tidak diganggu oleh syaitan. Yeah. So all all the all the children born, okay, the syaitan will whisper or try to disturb the babies, but except Maryam and also her child Isa alaihi salam. So masya Allah Allah granted her doa. Ya Allah kabulkan doa ibunya Maryam agar diselamatkan daripada uh, gangguan syaitan. Okay, masya Allah. Next, so the okay, we move on to Surah Al Imran, okay, verse 37. So, uh, what happened next? Yeah, because she already did her pledge, Nazar, okay, and it's compulsory to to uh, to 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 do that. Okay, so she sent her child Maryam to Baitul Maqdis, okay, the Masjid Al Aqsa, okay, to and. And we will uh, read about Zakaria. Okay, I'm the in the Rajim. But a couple of her Rabbu her the Kabul in Hassanim were better her Nabat and Hassana were better her Nabat and Hassano were Kafala her Zakaria. Kafala her Zakaria Kundama the Hala Aleha Zakaria Mihrab. وجد عندها رزقا قال ما قال يا مريم أن لك هذا قال يا مريم أن لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب Okay, let's move on to the translation. So her Lord accepted her graciously. It's made that Allah granted her dua. Okay, and blessed her with a pleasant upbringing. Yeah, so we trusted her to the care of Zechariah. Yeah, so in English they call Zechariah. Okay, whenever Zechariah visited her in the sanctuary, the mihrab, or some say as a chamber, he found her supplied with provisions. He exclaimed, Oh Mary, where did this come from? She replied, it is from Allah. Surely Allah provides for whoever he wills without limit. Yeah. So before, before that, okay, Maryam, okay, it means the one who devote um, herself to Allah. Like the one who worship Allah. That's the meaning of Maryam. Maybe some of you was thinking what's the meaning of Maryam. So Maryam means like, 
in the tafsir is like someone who divorces in Allah. Okay, Masha Allah. Okay, and okay, and his teacher, I mean her teacher is Zakaria. Okay, Zakaria. Okay, Nabi Zakaria alayhi salam. Okay, and and one day, okay, when he when he visited her in her chamber, okay, yeah, he found that uh, Maryam. He had a fruits. I mean, like a, a a basket of fruits. Okay, and the fruits not on the season. Like for example, like uh, during winter we have oranges. Yeah. During the summer we have watermelon. Yeah. So the the fruits grow okay according to the seasons. So so it's not a season yet, but yeah, there's there are fruits uh, with Maria and and Zakaria. Alayhi salam, he was surprised like how Maryam got this type of fruit because it's not the season, right? And Maryam said it's from Allah, and Allah gives risk, provision means risk, okay, without limit, okay, mashallah. And next, maybe you uh, think that's maybe a, the story of Maryam, but next, okay, verse 38, it's not a story of Maryam, it's a story of Zakaria alayhi salam. So Allah records okay, in the Quran not only the story of Maryam, but when Allah Ta'ala tells us about the story of Maryam, Allah Ta'ala continues with the story of Zakaria. Because Zakaria plays okay, uh, Zakaria alayhi salam plays uh, an important role in the in the life of Maryam. Okay, mashaAllah. So let's read the verse 38. هناك دعا زكريا ربه قال ربي هب لي من لدنك ذرية. ترى كسيه. Thank you so much. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. هناك دعا زكريا ربه قال ربي هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة. قال ربي هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء. Yeah, when I was doing this slide, I was thinking like, uh, should I include this in my slide because I will focus in only on the story of Maryam, right? But suddenly, if there's a story of Zakaria, then I was thinking like, there must be a message that Allah wants to send us, like, why suddenly there's a story of Zakaria, alayhi <laughs> salam. Okay. Because Zakaria, alayhi salam, okay, is her teacher. Okay, he, he teach, I mean, he, I mean, he taught Maryam, Okay, about worship, okay, about um, to be devoted to Allah, okay, to be pious, to be taqwa. So Allah Ta'ala mentioned his story. Okay. Then and there, Zechariah prayed to his Lord, saying, My Lord, grant me by your grace, righteous offspring. You are certainly the hero of all prayers. So Zechariah alayhi salam, okay, he had this situation okay, where um, he didn't have any child. Okay, and he's very, and he's already very old, and his wife too. And it's during that time, it's like impossible, like because we know like there's a certain age, right? Yeah. So it's during that time, it's impossible okay, to have a baby like, for his age. Okay, but when he mentioned, when he reminds the the saying of Maryam, okay, that Allah gives in Allah yarzuku may yashadagarihisaf. Okay, Allah give okay, the risk okay, without any limits. Okay, then from here, okay, we could know that okay, although Maryam is his student, but Maryam teaches him that Allah is okay, Allah is most gracious, mashaAllah. Okay, and then he prayed to Allah to grant him a child. Okay, next, let's see. Okay, MashaAllah, Allah Ta'ala, he granted his, uh, du his dua. Okay, I'm going to summarize this okay, from verse 39 okay, and 40, okay, 41, okay. Okay, until verse 41. So I'm going to summarize this because it's focused on Zakaria alayhi salam. So when, when Zakaria alayhi salam, he asked Allah to grant him a child, and Allah grant him, although it's impossible for during for his age. Okay, and Zakaria asked Allah 
to give him signs. And Allah said that, that you, that in verse 41, that your signs that you will not be able to speak to people for three days except for a gesture, a gesture for like, like sign language. Yeah, not sign language, but just, just by gesture. Yeah. So from here, we know that Allah okay, is capable of all the impossible. Like, if we human think that it's impossible, but there's, there's nothing impossible okay, in the hand of Allah. Okay, for example, the story of Zakaria. Okay, mashallah. Okay, and then his wife, okay, and his wife was pregnant. Okay, and we know that um, his son named Yahya, in another verse, in Surah Maryam, you can recite the, uh, the, okay, among the first ayah, okay, the, the, the page here on the right. Okay, that's about the, the story of Zakaria and Islam, and Allah named him as Yahya. Okay, and now we move on to verse 42. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Wa idh qalatil malaikatu ya maryam inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa'il alameen. So it means, and remember when the angel said, O oh Mary, surely Allah has selected you, purified you, and chosen you over all women of the world. So, MashaAllah, Allah Ta'ala chose Maryam, okay, okay and okay, a girl, and we're going to um, move on to the story of Maryam, like how she conceived Isa okay. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so, it's verse 43. Okay. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Ya Maryam, kunti li Rabbiki wasjudi warkai ma arrafiin. So from this verse, okay, we know that, O oh Mary, be devout to your Lord, prostrate yourself in prayer, and bow along with those who bow down. So during the time of uh, Maryam and Isa and Isa and Salam, okay, they have the the sujud. Okay, maybe some of you think that sujud only in the time of our Prophet Muhammad Salam, but it's already done okay, during the time of Maria Malay Salam. Okay. So move on. So verse 44, Surah Al Imran. Okay, I'm going to uh, summarize it here. Okay, then how Nabi Zakaria Alayhi Salam uh, was appointed as the teacher of Maryam, the mentor of Maryam. Okay, and it's mentioned in the, the ayah that they have like a ballot, you know, a ballot, like, um, and it come off like, in some countries said about three times. In Nabi Zakari Salam, his name was mentioned, okay, like three times. They can say, Aklamahu means a pen, okay, a pen, but uh, some uh, Tafsir said like a, like a ballot when they you put like all the names, okay, and then when you take out one, okay, and three times it was. Three times they mentioned that okay, the name of Zakaria uh, Zakaria okay, Alayhi Allah has chosen him as the mentor, the teacher, okay, the guardian of Maryam Alayhi Salam. Okay, MashaAllah. And Maryam Alayhi Salam, okay, she studied from a prophet, Nabi Zakaria Alayhi Salam. And that's why that MashaAllah she, um, she grew up as a obedient. Uh, servant of Allah, he okay, just worship okay, in the masjid, mashallah. And some say that Nabi Zakaria Salam was a carpenter, okay, a carpenter to Kangkayu, a carpenter. So he made a chamber okay, for Maryam to, to, to do her prayers, okay, to do her zikir, okay, and tasbih, and every, um, I mean, every zikir that during, that, during that time. So let's move on to Surah Maryam, okay, verse 16. So, so to, uh, I covered two surah, okay, Surah Al Imran, okay, the Al Imran, and Surah Maryam. Okay. And it's the only surah in the Quran mentioned Maryam, okay, the, the lady's name, mashallah. Okay, so I have about uh, less than um, five minutes. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to. Summarize okay the all this ayah. 
Okay, from verse 16 okay, until verse 22. Okay, 23. Yes. So when Maria Malisalam, okay, when uh, he was uh, when she went to the east, okay, okay, for example, okay, let me see here, yeah, okay, and mention in the book of Prophet the story of Mary when she withdraw from her family to a place in the in the east, so they moved to the east, okay, and when he when she was alone, okay, there was a man came to her. Okay, in the form of men, okay, a man, and what did she say? What did she, what did, and she was shocked, okay, and she said, "Call it in me, a'udhu bi rahmani minka in kunta taqiyya." Okay, and she was shocked, and she said, "I truly seek refuge in the most compassion of Rahman from you. So leave me alone if you are God fearing." So when in in the tafsir, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, when Maryam said, "Ar Rahman," suddenly okay, the man, it um. Uh, Turn himself to to the real Jibril to the form of uh, of an angel. Yeah. So we know that uh, angel they can they can change themselves okay, to man. Yeah. But not lady, just just a man and not a child. Okay, because sometimes we saw like they some people they draw like the angels like a baby with a wings, but it's not true. Yeah. Okay, all, angel they only can change to a to a man, okay, not a, a boy or a lady, yeah, only a, a man because Allah knows the best. Okay? And one of the reasons Allah we can um, think about it like the man is like more authority than the woman, okay, and mashallah Allah knows the best. Okay? So when Maryam said Ar Rahman, okay, the man turned himself to the real, himself as uh, uh, Gabriel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam. Okay, and okay, let me summarize it. And he called the Innama and the Rasul of Dikil Ahaba Laki Bulaman Zakiya. And he responded, I am only a messenger from your Lord sent to bless you with a pure son. Okay. And another Kiroat, okay, in Ibn Kasir said, Li Yahaba Laki. Okay, in this, uh, we, we read the reward of. Um, Okay, in our Quran, okay, we say li, li ahaba. Okay, but in the, another recitation, like Abu Amru, okay, li, li ahaba. This means he refers to Allah. But I hear it refers to Allah. But in another recitation of Quran, inshallah, you will learn Kiraat. Because Arabic language in the Quran is not only Tajweed, okay, the recitation, Tilawa. Okay, but there's another um, discipline of... Um, of knowledge we call as ilmu kiraat, okay, the, the types of uh, recitation. Yeah, so li ahaba or li ahaba. And she was shocked okay, when the angel said to her that Allah will grant her a son okay, because nobody touched her and she was very pure, okay, a virgin girl, okay, and never married before. Okay, and this is a test from Allah. Okay, and we will see uh, uh, the, the lesson from Maryam. Okay. okay, verse 21. Okay. So this is the reason that Allah okay, uh, grant to Maria Malisalam okay, a son without a husband or without a father for Isa Alayhi Salam. Okay, to show okay, his power, his capable capability, ability to do something is impossible. Okay, as we know that there must be a father and, and mother. And to show like, and also the Adam alayhi salam, okay, who born without a mother and a father. And Isa alayhi salam, who was born without a father. And that is impossible for Allah Ta'ala. Okay, and okay, I'm going to move it fast. Okay, and Maryam alayhi salam, okay, she delivered uh, Isa alayhi salam in a remote place. Could you imagine there was no one with her? Okay, not even her mother or father, she was all alone. Okay, and where did she, in verse 23, okay, it's mentioned that okay, she delivered to Isa alayhi salam okay, at the, uh, near the palm tree. Okay. And I would like to highlight one point here. 
24. So a voice reassured her from below her, do not grieve, your Lord has provided a stream at your feet. Yeah, so below her here, okay, maybe, what do you think that below her means? Yeah. So below her means, okay, so maybe some of you think that maybe it could be Isa alayhi salam, but when we refer to tafsir, so this is the importance to understand the Quran from the tafsir, because not everything mentioned in the Quran, it, literally, but we have to refer to the tafsir to know the exact meaning of from below her, min tahtiha. So min tahtiha, from below her, okay, who, who said this, do not grieve? Okay, Allah tahzani. So it's actually, it's, maybe some of you think it's Nabi Isa alayhi salam because like she was delivering, right? But actually it is Jibril alayhi salam. So do not grieve, your Lord has provided a stream at your feet. Is the this I mean it's from Jibril alayhi salam, not from Isa alayhi salam. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the important thing. Okay, because Isa alayhi salam, yeah, he, I mean she, uh, we know that he I mean if he could speak, okay, Allah give him miracles to speak when uh, he's still a newborn baby, okay, as a as a miracle from Allah. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. Okay, next okay. Then, okay, verse 26, okay, okay it's about Allah Ta'ala, he um, commanded her to, okay, wash, uh, kuli wash robis, mean like eat and drink, okay, like eat the dates okay, from the palm tree, okay, and the drink from the stream, like a river, in the Ibn Kasir, uh, Rahimahullah, Tafsir said that it's a, like a river under her, okay, okay and then, Then she brought her baby to her people, and everybody was shocked. Like, and these are the uh, the tasks, okay, the challenges that she faced as a young lady okay, without a husband. Like, what others would you think about her? Okay, but this is a command from Allah, okay, and she brought her baby, a newborn baby, okay, to her people, and she told them to talk to the baby, and she and Allah commanded her to not to speak anything or, okay, or talk anything to them and just show to her baby and they say that how how can we talk to a infant to a baby who just newborn okay, and that's the miracle of Isa alayhi salam if you could tell them okay, that they are that he's the servant of Allah and Allah has given him a scripture okay. so let's move on okay, to the lessons okay mashallah so you can read the Surah of Maryam. Okay, let's move on to the Hadith. Okay. Okay, hadith Musnad Al-Imam Ahmad, um, Hadith number 2896. Okay, Ibn Abbas, Radiallahu Anhu, Qala, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so in the Quran, it's not, uh, it's not mentioned the names of the other ladies, but in the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned their names, okay, including, including um, okay, uh, Maryam Alayhi Salam. So Ibn, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reported, okay, Ibn Abbas means Abdullah bin Abbas. Okay, during that time, there are a lot of Abdullah. Okay, so like Abdullah bin Mas'ud, okay, Abdullah bin Umar, and this is Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. Okay, the best of women among the people of paradise are Khadijah bin Khuwailid, Fatima bin Muhammad, Maryam bin Imran, and Asya bin Muzahim, the wife of Pharaoh. Yeah. So in the hadith mentioned okay, that Maryam is the chosen one and the, the best of women among all the women in the paradise. Okay, mashallah. Okay, may Allah make us among them. Amin, Ya Rabb. So let's move on to the last slide, okay, the lessons from the life of Maryam alayhi salam. Okay, first, Allah Almighty answers dua, okay, like how Maryam alayhi salam's mother, okay, the wife of Imran, he made dua when she was pregnant, may Allah grant her 
a, a, a child, a pious child, and Masha Allah, she not she's she's not she wasn't only great for Allah for her child, but also for her offspring. Into anak cucu keturunan, Masha Allah. Okay, and Allah answers her dua. Okay, not only uh, the wife of Imran's dua, okay, but also the dua of Zakaria alaihi okay, salam. Itu uh, that Allah grant him a child. Okay, and then the next one provision is from Allah Almighty. And if you still remember the Allah granted Maryam alaihi salam fruits, which not on its season yet. Okay, Masha Allah. And then Allah Almighty has power over all things. Okay, and when we look the story of Maryam, okay, it's, it's only Maryam in this world. There's no other Maryam the second, no. It's only Maryam okay, that could, um, could bear a child okay, without a husband. Okay, and only Isa okay, um, that born without a father. Okay, there's only yeah, this Maryam and also um, Isa alayhi salam. Okay, MashaAllah. There's no other like Isa the second or Maryam the second. Okay, only both of them. So that's why Allah Ta'ala say Isa ibn Maryam. If you observe the Quran, okay, Allah mentioned okay, Isa ibn Maryam. Okay, not just Isa, but Isa ibn Maryam. Okay, to emphasize that Isa is, is the son of Maryam. Okay, and also like uh, Maryam binti Imran. Okay, Maryam, okay, the, 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 the daughter of Imran. Okay, and next, the test are blessing from Almighty. Okay, if, if you could see that, MashaAllah, Okay, the stories of uh, Maryam, it's, it's not easy for her, right? Like a young child, a young girl, okay, and a virgin girl to be tested from Allah, okay, the tribulations, the challenges from her society, and her, and her community say that, that uh, her family is from a good family, like how you could carry this child, okay, and to show that Allah is, um, there's, a, there's a test and blessing from Allah. Okay, to elevate the ranking of uh, his servants and definitely there will be a reward from Allah okay, for all the tests. And always think um, positive if there's a like, difficulty in our life, okay, we always trust in Allah. Okay? And lastly, put trust in Allah Almighty. Okay? When we re when recite the Surah Al-Maryam, okay, Maryam said in that uh, ayah that she hoped that she will not, okay, she won't be alive. Okay, when she delivered a baby because of the painful. Maybe some people think that oh, Maryam delivered easily. No. Okay, Maryam um, feel very painful. Okay. And it's like a painful delivery, okay, a normal delivery. And she was alone. Could you imagine that? And yeah, she had I mean, hope to Allah and Allah grant him a, I mean, grant her a son. Okay. So always put trust in Allah and never give up. Yeah. And make a dua to Allah. Okay, and for our for our our for our children, for ourselves, for our family, and also for our offspring, inshallah. And one of the du'a that I would like to share with you in the from the Quran, Rabbana Hablana min Azwajina, wa Dhuriyatina Kurata Ayun wa Jaanna lil Mutafina Imama. So it means that O oh Allah, please grant us uh, spouses in Rabbana Hablana min Azwajina wa Dhuriyatina in our offspring. Kurata ayun. Kurata ayun in Arabic it means that um, I don't know like maybe but when you read tafsir, kurata ayun means that the tears kurata ayun means eyes, okay, but it's tears of happiness. Sometimes when we are happy, like we cry, right? Cry in happiness. So this means kurata ayun. Yeah. imama and please make us as a um, pious okay, the 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 one who leads the pious people. Okay, alam. And thank you so much. And I'm I apologize I apologize for my short shortcomings. And I'm so happy to be with you here, Alhamdulillah, and have the opportunity to share with you the the story of wonderful lady Maryam and Salam and um, her family, okay, Imran, okay, and his wife. Okay, may Allah bless them. May Allah. Uh, grant us a paradise and may Allah help our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Okay, may Allah ease their difficulties. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Subhanakum Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi wa tila alameen. Thank you everyone. Shukran lakum wa barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Thank you very much, Ustad Anur, for your great speech. We, we really appreciate that. Thank you for your time to giving us for tonight. Uh, now we have a trivia game, which will lead by Danish. Uh, her name is Danish Aisha, Nasi of Omnid and Tanta Lili, studying uh, management and IT at the University of Toronto uh, currently. Can we have Aisha Danish here?